So Facebook is now using so-called independent fact checkers to verify news stories on their site. The problem is those fact checkers aren't actually checking any facts, and I know, because in the last two weeks I've had two separate reports that have been called partly false information. But here's the problem. The reporters from USA Today and PolitiFact, who so-called fact check my stories, admit they never even bothered to watch them. So what are they basing their fact checks on? And how damaging is this to actual journalism? I think you know. I'm Ben Swan, and this is Truth in Media. Hey guys, welcome to the show. So fact checking the so-called fact checkers. That's what we're doing today. As I told you, I've had two stories that have been flagged on Facebook as partly false information. One of those stories on Instagram is blocked so that people can't see it at all. Now this is aside from just the typical algorithms that hide my content. It happens all the time to me and to hundreds of other journalists. But in this case, they're actually flagging certain stories because they're picking up traction and they're claiming that these stories are false news. Now remember, Facebook has a process that it goes through by having these so-called fact-checking sites as partners. PolitiFact is one of those partners and so is USA Today. Now here's the problem. With these two stories that I've put up, in both cases, the stories have been flagged as being partly false information, but not because of what's in the story but based on totally erroneous and other reasons. Let's start with this latest one. It just happened on Saturday from PolitiFact. So PolitiFact decided to do a fact check on this report that I did about the contact tracing bill that's being pushed through. It's HR 6666. It's an incredible story and an incredible bill, and it deserves your attention. If you have not seen the story, you gotta go try to find it on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. Even though it's being hidden from you, try to search Ben Swan HR 6666 so that you can see it. And the reason for that is because it's such a critically important issue. It's a contact tracing bill that puts $100 billion into tracking the population in the name of preventing coronavirus. Now I go into a lot information in this about what's in the bill and what's not in the bill, and also specifically wording that would leave this thing pretty vague and open to interpretation, as well as continued expansion in future years. Just as our government has done with bills like, for instance, the Patriot Act, which was supposed to be, right after 9-11, put into place to protect us against terrorism and has become a permanent part of the American political landscape. And also, the powers of the Patriot Act continue to expand, not retract. We suspect it would be a very similar issue with this contact tracing bill. However, PolitiFact decided that because the story had 100,000 views in less than a day, they needed to do something about it, and they did. PolitiFact has now pegged that story as being false according to their so-called truth-o-meter. Take a look at this. The May 12 post, which had more than 100,000 views by the next day, was flagged as part of Facebook's efforts to combat false news and misinformation on its news feed. The $100 billion is strictly targeted to fighting COVID-19. It would fund not only contact tracing, a process aimed at stopping the spread of the disease, but also COVID-19 testing and services for people isolating at home, which by the way, I explained all of that. And what it would do is create a contact tracing program. They're calling it the Trace Act. Now, the wording in this act is actually very short, and it's kind of to the point, but it leaves a lot of room not only for interpretation, but for expansion. And even what it does include in what's written in the text is pretty scary stuff. So While it does raise some privacy concerns, contact tracing has been used to slow the spread of other diseases, such as SARS and HIV. It's a common strategy in public health agencies across the country. The post also includes a 15 minute video in which Swan claims that the bill would create a quote, massive new surveillance structure in this country. It absolutely would. Now watch this. In the video, which we did not fact check, Swan argues that the contact tracing is useful only in the early stages of an outbreak and is now completely useless in the United States because a massive amount of the population has been exposed to the disease. Based on that, Swan argues that the contact tracing supported by the bill would be done to monitor you in your own home, traced in your own home, your associations monitored, and your movements monitored. And by the way, every single health official who has talked about contact tracing describes it in exactly that way. And then this PolitiFact little gem ends like this. The bill strictly targets the novel coronavirus. It would provide $100 billion to organizations that do COVID-19 testing or contact tracing 
or that provides services to people who are isolating at home. We rate the Facebook post false. So essentially what they're saying is we didn't bother to watch the video or even fact check the video. We want to take the title and decide that the title itself is false, claiming that the title is the totality of the report. That would be as if you took any headline out of the New York Times or the Washington Post or USA Today or your local newspaper and you said, I'm going to decide whether or not this article is accurate based on how I interpret the headline, how I interpret the meaning of the headline. Because the meaning of the headline is given context by the report itself. If you don't bother to read the report, watch the report, or fact check the report itself, then in that case, now you would find a huge problem. You're just basing your fact check on how you feel about the title. Of course, that's not journalism. PolitiFact pretends it's doing journalism. Facebook pretends that PolitiFact is doing journalism, and they're not. Now, this happened a second time as well with another story of mine that was getting a lot of traction, and it was about the uh, Wuhan Virology Lab in Wuhan, China, receiving $3.7 million from the NIH over the last few years to fund uh, coronavirus testing on bats. This is a fact. The Wuhan Institute of Virology undertook coronavirus experiments on mammals captured more than 1,000 miles away in Yunnan, which were funded by a $3.7 million grant from the U.S. government. Sequencing of the COVID-19 genome has traced it back to bats found in Yunnan caves, but it was first thought to have transferred to humans at an animal market in Wuhan. We also now know that NIAID, the department associated with the National Institutes of Health, of which Dr. Anthony Fauci is in control, had already been conducting experiments with the Wuhan lab in the past. Now, in this case, I explained that NIH and NIAID, under the lead of Dr. Anthony Fauci, who was the head of the coronavirus response for the United States, essentially has sent $3.7 million to the Wuhan Virology Lab to study coronavirus in bats. That is an absolute fact. In fact, recently I posted these pictures on my Facebook and Instagram to further back up that claim. It shows that the NIH did grant to Echo Health Alliance $3.4 million just over six years, distributed across all sites, including the Echo Health Alliance Incorporated, New York, and the sub-awardees, the Wuhan Institute of Virology, East China Normal University, the Institute of Pathogen Biology in Beijing, the Duke NUS Medical School in Singapore. Problem is that USA Today has now decided that this is false information, not just from me, but from everyone who posts anything about the US providing funding to that lab. But the fact is the US did provide funding to that lab, but here's what USA Today did. They used this quote unquote fact check to phrase it this way, the Obama administration did not send $3.7 million to Wuhan lab. The report then goes on to explain that based on a Facebook post by some obscure person who specifically said the Obama administration did it, that this is not actually true. And in fact, has now rated every story that points out that the U.S. sent funds to that virology lab as being false and misleading information, when in fact it's not. Now, we never said it was the Obama administration. We said it was the NIH under Obama and President Trump, under the direction of Anthony Fauci. If Dr. Anthony Fauci cannot be honest with the public about his work in the past associated with this lab, and if he has not been honest in the past about his connection to this lab, then Fauci has to go. It's absolutely indisputable. There's no question about it. But if you look at what USA Today did, they created a different story referencing the same information. And now they're going back and every story that draws a line between US funding to that lab is deemed as false information. This is a very dangerous issue because what Facebook is allowing to happen on its platform are these so-called independent fact checkers who are not independent, who have a point of view, and who, by the way, in some cases, don't even work for anyone. So for instance, in the PolitiFact case, this is what's really interesting to me. PolitiFact is the organization that did the fact check, but the reporter who reached out to me from PolitiFact doesn't actually work for PolitiFact. He's a freelance reporter. I actually looked him up and he's a freelancer who's writing for them. And this is what is entirely wrong with this situation, is that you have Facebook using these so-called fact-checking organizations who are not fact-checking anything. In fact, 
it's not even in their purview to bother fact checking. What they're actually doing is trying to control information and suppress information they don't like. And they're doing it under, under the guise of being the proper channel, the responsible journalist. But there's nothing responsible about what they're doing at all. How can you claim a fact check is checking facts without ever bothering to read or watch a report? I just want to remind you, as you're watching these reports, as you see it coming up, when you see fact checkers from PolitiFact or from USA Today or from Snopes, which is a joke of an organization, claiming something is not true, you have to dig deeper. It's all part of a strategy to try to discredit information that those in power don't like. They fund it and they get control of it in order to protect the issues that they want out there and to demonize anyone who stands contrary to their point of view. That is our report for today. We'll have much more coming up this week, but be sure to check out those reports if you can find them. They're well worth your time, and I'll see you next time.